Shalom. All praises, blessings, glories, and honors to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kwadash. Double honors to my Ella apostles and Bishop Ellas of a great millstone who have taught me this truth as well of men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy to the elect of the nation of Israel. When we use so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the seed line of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. To you I say Shalom, beginning with the 144,000 prophets, and Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Ratazah, this lesson is edifying and informative. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, an evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. Verse 25. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. In the news from the RT, various headlines. U.S. must prepare for war with China and Russia. Congress. A commission has urged Washington to drastically expand its nuclear arsenal. In so doing, Washington will beat its plowshares into swords and pruner hooks into spears. According to the book of Joel, the third chapter, the 10th verse. That is to say that they will be taking their economic wealth and using it towards the research, development, enhancements, and modification of weapons of mass destruction, primarily for ICBM nuclear missiles, which, according to Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 25, are the weapons of the Lord's indignation in preparation for the third world's woe according to the book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 14 which cometh quickly for we according to the book of Ecclesiastes the third chapter the eighth verse are in the season of war hence the reason why these nations have been preparing for war had been given the proclamation by Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai through his words that are spoken of through the mouth of his prophets to do according to the book of Joel the third chapter as it is written proclaim ye this among the Gentiles prepare war wake up the mighty men that all the men of war draw near let them come up and so the drums of war have been beaten, booming. So these nations are preparing for war. 
And this is just another example of that. A commission has urged Washington to drastically expand its nuclear arsenal. The U.S. needs to urgently update and expand both its nuclear arsenal and the conventional military in order to face the combined might of Russia. Russia, in the book of Ezekiel 38 chapter, is referred to as Gog and Magog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. In the book of Isaiah, they are referred to as the Medes. The name Russia is also actually an Hebrew word, which is Ra'ash Shar, which means chief or head prince. And the so-called Chinese or the Moabites. The Congressional Strategic Posture Commission urged in its final report published on Thursday. The United States, which according to biblical prophecy is Babylon the Great, and its allies must be ready and the allies of America, Babylon the Great, according to biblical prophecy written in the book of Revelation, the 17th chapter, and the book of Obadiah, will betray America, Babylon the Great. Be ready to deter and defeat both adversaries simultaneously. But you understand what will happen according to biblical prophecy. The commission said the U.S. led international order and the values it upholds are at risk from the Chinese and Russian authoritarian regimes. While the commission has not identified any specific evidence of Russia and China working together, we worry there may be ultimate coordination between them in some way which gets us to this two-way construct. A senior official involved in the report told Rodgers on condition of anomaly. The current U.S. national security strategy calls for defeating one major adversary while deterring another. The commission argued that the combined threat from China and Russia become acute as early as 2027 and it is very clear that it will become acute much more faster than they estimate because the Lord Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai are hastening the day for the elect's sake as it is written it is also written that the inward thought of these Edomites is that their houses shall continue forever. So decisions need to be made now in order for the nation to be prepared. The 131 findings and 81 recommendations in the report amount to the need for massive expansion of both the conventional armed forces and the nuclear triad. The report demands more of the B-21 stealth bombers and Columbia-class ballistic missile submarines. The B-21 is still in development and is expected to enter service by 2027 at the earliest. The first two Columbia-class subs are under construction and are expected in 2030. The U.S. Navy has planned to order 12 to replace the 18 Ohio-class boats currently in service. Amid all of the Commission's recommendations to increase the number of strategic and tactical nuclear systems, there was almost no mention of costs in the entire report, which does not seem to acknowledge any limits to defense spending. The Federal, excuse me, the Federation, rather, excuse me, of American Scientists, FAS, said in response. At a press event 
announcing the report, the commission's vice chair, retired Republican Senator John Kyle, argued that higher military spending is a small price to hopefully preclude a possible nuclear war. A nuclear war, according to biblical prophecy, is inevitable because the second war is passed and behold the third will come quickly according to revelation 11 chapter the 14th verse a war according to isaiah chapter 9 verse 5 that will be fought with burning and fuel of fire so nuclear war is inevitable and that president joe biden and congress need to take the case to the american people to spend more money according to the fas however the commission's recommendations are likely to exacerbate the arms race further constrict the window for engaging with russia and china on arms control and redirect funding away from more proximate properties the only reason the commission did not argue for an immediate expansion of the U.S. nuclear stockpile is that the weapons produce, excuse me, production rather, excuse me, complex currently does not have the capacity to do so. The FAS noted, adding that there is no need for a nuclear arms race so long as the U.S. has enough submarines to present a credible deterrent to a first strike by an adversary. This includes the article. In other news, the U.S. breaks its $6 billion promise to Iran. Tehran released the five suspected American spies in exchange for cash for humanitarian purposes. And obviously, the Edomites broke their promise to the Persians. Washington has gone back and has promised to unblock $6 billion in frozen Iranian assets even after Tehran released the five American citizens accused of espionage against the Islamic Republic. Under the deal last month, the money was transferred from a South Korean bank to a bank in Qatar, where Tehran could access it under strict monitoring by the U.S. Treasury Department to ensure that the cash is used only for humanitarian purposes. And by all rights, they have the right to do whatever they want with their money uh, one would argue right however on Thursday the US and Qatar reportedly reached an understanding that Doha will ignore any withdrawal requests from Tehran according to several officials who spoke to the media on condition of anonymity anom excuse me the deal has caused controversy in the US with Republicans claiming that handing over the funds would encourage Tehran to capture more Americans for further or future deals, excuse me. It has come under further criticism following a deadly Hamas attack on Israel, which some unsubstantiated reports particularly blamed on Tehran, even as US officials denied having any proof of Iranian involvement. None of the funds that have now gone to Qatar have actually been spent or accessed in any way by Iran, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken told reporters in Israel on Thursday. Indeed, funds from the account are overseen by the Treasury Department can only be dispensed for humanitarian goods, food, medicine, medical equipment, and never touch Iranian hands. So these people will not even be able to touch their own money. The prison exchange was a result of months of back-channel negotiations between Washington and Tehran. The final agreement sweetened by the U.S. promise to unfree $6 billion in Iranian oil revenue, so this was originally a promise. A promise that was just simply a comfort unto the Iranians, which <laughs> now they look like fools. Because... They should have known that these devils were never going to keep their promise in the first place to begin with. The five Americans included Samik Namazi, which 
this portion of the article is irrelevant, so I will conclude reading it here. Point has been made. In other news, also from the RT, Hamas attack in Israel like 10 9 is blinking. So they're comparing the attack on Israel onto 10 9 11s. Like 10 9 11s, excuse me. Israel is, a, is obliged to respond forcefully to such an assault. The U.S. Secretary of State has said, and ultimately, Iran is the goal. Okay, they've always wanted to get Iran on the PNAC Project for New American Century, PNAC. Okay, a neoconservative think tank that was established in 1997 to expand American hegemony under the guise of globalization. You can look it up for yourselves, verify it. Okay, fact checked it. It is known as PNAC, Project for New American Century, a neoconservative think tank that had been established in 1997. Okay, Iran is the last country on the list. Recall also that it is written in the scriptures pertaining to biblical prophecy that the least of the flock and the least of the flock is the state of Israel shall draw them which is America Babylon the great out out where in the Middle East for what reason for war because that is where the thorough's war will be fought <laughs> okay it says US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has called Hamas assault in Israel the equivalent of 10 9 11s it is Israel already responding by leveling large swathes of Gaza. Blinken promised Washington support for as long as America exists. If you look at the attack in proportion to the size of Israel's population, this is the equivalent of 10 9 11s, Blinken said in Tel Aviv on Thursday. That's how big and how devastating the attack has been. Some 1,300 Israelis have been killed and more than 3,000 wounded since Hamas militants launched their attack on Saturday. More than 1,400 Palestinians, including 447 children, have been killed and around 5,000 more wounded in the same period. With these figures continuing to rise as is really warplanes bomb the densely populated enclave of Gaza. Blinken did not mention these casualties in his speech or attempt to measure Palestinian losses in 9-11s. A total of 2,996 people were killed on September 11, 2001, when Al-Qaeda terrorists hijacked four commercial airlines and we understand the true backstory behind that. I'll leave it at that. Two planes hit the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York City. One hit the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. And the fourth crashed in a field in Pennsylvania following a passenger revolt. Then U.S. President George W. Bush invoked 9-11 to invade and occupy Afghanistan. There you go. In Iraq. Before the PNAC. Although the latter had no connection to the attacks. Bush also responded by dramatically expanding the U.S. domestic surveillance operations and in signing into law the authorization for use of military force AUMF, which remains on U.S. law books and has been used by subsequent administrations to launch military operations in 22 countries. Following Hamas' attack, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was vowed to crush the Palestinian militants, while Defense Minister Yaov Gallant declared on Thursday that the Israeli military will wipe them off the face of the earth. The overwhelming majority of Gaza's residents are civilians, however, and with the strips, borders sealed, and an Israeli-imposed siege 
preventing food, water, electricity, and fuel from entering, they have borne the brunt of the Palestinian casualties. In an earlier speech alongside Netanyahu, Blinken said that he implored the Israeli leaders to take every possible precaution to avoid harming civilians. However, he added that no country can or would tolerate the slaughter of its citizens and that Israel has the right indeed the obligation to defend itself and to ensure that this never happens again. This includes the article. In other news, two thousand eight crisis sage warns of new global economic shock. This will be the final article for Rev. Lesson Abaratiza. Marxists are discontinuing the risk of a massive conflict in the Middle East. Noriel Rubini has warned. Pardon me. Global financial markets are for now underestimating the threat of a massive conflict throughout the Middle East. Renowned economist and New York University professor Nouriel Rubini has warned. In an interview with Bloomberg on Thursday, he said that most investors believe Israel has no choice but to go into Gaza and get rid of Hamas. Pricing in a baseline scenario in which Israel occupies Gaza is going to get ugly, but the conflict remains contained. However, Rubini, excuse me, who predicted the financial crisis of 2008-2009 and was nicknamed Dr. Doom by Wall Street, stressed that there is a downside scenario in which Iran and Lebanon get involved prompting a conflict to flare up between Israel and who? Iran. And this will be the spark of it all, so to speak. Because once Israel attacks Iran, and Iran retaliates, America will then become a guard unto Israel. And then Russia, Gog and Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, will then become a guard unto Iran, the Persians. Okay, so this thing is heating up. The Lord is mushering the host of the battle. The Lord is hastening this process. And while all that's happening, make no mistake, they are getting ready to introduce and subsequently mandate that CHIP throughout the globe because that has to first be mandated before the Thoreau's woe um, really really uh, kick starts so to speak because the Lord is not a man that he should lie okay so we're looking out for Jacob's trouble the global introduction and subsequent mandation of the mark of the beast which is the RFID microchip and then the third world's woe and the simultaneous return of our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach from the east refer to second Ezra 13 chapter so all these things are being hastened so we are another day closer to the return of our Lord and the end of Esau Edom's kingdom for Esau is the end of the world. He is the end of this current eon, this current uninterrupted age. But very soon the Lord will interrupt his rulership. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he will be in straits. Okay, it says, in which Iran and Lebanon get involved, prompting a conflict to flare up between Israel and Iran. According to economists, if Israel tries to destroy Hamas, which is an Iranian-backed militia, Iran, that is a major backer of Hamas, decides to unleash Hezbollah in Lebanon, and then you have the second front in Lebanon, maybe a third one in the West Bank. And at that point, Israel will have to attack Iran. In this case, the supply of oil from the Gulf region would be disrupted, and you get a spike in oil prices, and the economic impact would be huge, he said, adding that it's not the baseline scenario, but it's a risk. It's a possibility, right? 
guess what? It will happen. Because it is written that the lease of the flock shall draw them out. A surge in oil prices will trigger a stagflationary shock and create a huge dilemma for central banks, Rubini warned. They already have their system in place. All they need is a catalyst to afford it. Okay, it has to seem like a very uh, persuasive and justifiable reason before the uh, the eyes of the people across the globe. That way they'll accept things easily and not buck up against it. Global oil prices jumped by about 4% this week as renewed hostilities between Israel and armed Palestinian groups threatened the stability of the Middle East. The international Brent benchmark was hovering around $86 per barrel on Thursday, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude was trading around $83 per barrel. The latest flare-up began early on Saturday when armed Palestinian groups launched a surprise attack on multiple locations along the Gaza border with Israel launching a counteroffensive in response. This concludes the article. So now let's get the scriptures again and then conclude the lesson. Again, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 7, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, through his son Yahweh Shai, and evil, the word evil means bad time. Evil means time, ill means bad. What is that evil? The evils of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The end of this man's kingdom. Whereby <clears throat> he will come down having great wrath because he knows that he had but a short time. Okay? The global mandating of the sea hip. The third was woe. <clears throat> okay? And the return of our Lord Yahweh Shai. After the will of the heavenly for the Yahweh. And only evil behold is come. An end is come. The end is come. The watcheth for thee behold it is come. So the end which is coming is watching. Verse 25. Destruction cometh. <laughs> and not only is the end watching. But it will come with destruction. Because destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace. Who? The people are going to attempt to seek peace. And when they're going to be promised peace and safety, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, that is when destruction which cometh will come suddenly upon them, as travail cometh upon a woman with child in a ninth month. And they shall not escape. Okay? It says, and there shall be none, because there will be no peace. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Evil after evil, bad news after bad news. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. Oh man, we got to find those guys that were on the street corners. They were talking the truth. But if you happen to bump into a prophet, read what the Lord said is going to happen in Jeremiah the 15th chapter, around the second verse. Whither shall we go forth? Our Lord said to tell them, Such as are for death to death so on and so forth then shall they seek a vision of the prophet but the law shall perish from the priest and another reason why they're not going to be able to find the vision of the prophets is because the Lord is going to cut off access to his word according to Amos chapter 8 verse 11 there will be a famine of the word it is written that man shall not, not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai so there will be a literal famine and famine of the word, more so. But the law shall perish from the priests and counsel from the ancients. So access to this world will be cut off, okay? And in the days of evil, two-thirds are going to be asked out. So with that, I will conclude this lesson. I'll write this out. It has been edifying. This has been another in the news. And shalom to the elect.